Hi, my name is Lynn, and I'm a docent here for the Putwin program. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about village life. And that it covers a lot of different things. So the first thing I want you to think about is at the very beginning of the day, when you get up and get ready for school, you have to put your clothes on and brush your teeth and have breakfast. Guess what? The Putwin children had chores to do before breakfast. Some of the children had to actually go and collect fresh water. Others had to collect firewood because without fresh water and firewood, their mom couldn't fix breakfast. So let's look at the village a little bit and see what are all the different things that happened in a day. you can see this picture okay this is a picture of a village and the village is showing some tule huts those are the big houses and there's people doing all kinds of different things and probably the most important thing is what's happening right here in the middle that's where all the cooking happens so we're going to start a little bit about cooking and how that works and then we'll talk about some of the other things too As you have already heard, um, the Putwin were called uh, hunter-gatherers. And the hunters were the men and boys, and you've already heard a little bit about the boys and what kinds of hunting they did. And just as a reminder, they went for fish, they looked for um, wild birds, ducks, and wild turkeys geese, and of course the mammals, which would have been the rabbits and bigger ones, the deer and elk. The girls on the other hand were the gatherers. They actually had a pretty tough job because what they had to do is learn how to recognize which plants you could eat and which ones were not good for you at all. Now the girls used several different tools and one of them they used looks like this. Have you seen this before? It's a deer antler. And deer antlers were used for all kinds of things. But in the case of just leaving it as an antler, they used it to dig roots and um, roots and bulbs out of the ground. Now, if I asked you, do you eat roots and bulbs? You'd probably go, nah. But you do. Think about it. A carrot is a root and an onion is a bulb. And that's exactly the kinds of foods that they were looking for and used this as a digging stick. And boy, was it strong. Besides digging up the um, roots and bulbs, they also would gather uh, seeds during different times of the year. And they would use a big basket like this. And you'll see it's, you know, it's, it's a pretty good size and they used um, something that looked like a tennis racket and they would go along and they'd hit the seeds real fast and the seeds would fly off and go into the basket. And then when they got back, their job was to grind them up so it could be added to their food. Besides the meat and all the roots and vegetables and the seeds, they had one food that was the most important and that was acorns. Um, they were known as the part of the larger group of people that were called acorn eaters. And as a result, acorns were very, very important. It provided all kinds of good nutrition and also was a base that they could do, um, that they could make other things with. So let me talk about what that was like. This is the one time that men and women, boys and girls, all did the same thing at the same time, and that was to gather acorns. Now, it was a long walk from where their um, village was set up to where the oak trees were, because oaks are where acorns are grown. When they, um, they would walk for maybe a whole day before they got to their oak trees. And then the party began 
because the boys would get to climb into the trees and shake down the acorns, and everybody else worked at picking up the acorns and putting them to, into large baskets. And the baskets looked something like this. This is called a burden basket, and the women were the one that had to carry the acorns back to the village. Now this burden basket was um, a pretty big basket and you can kind of see here that there's a strap that goes across the front of her head and inside the basket would be all of these acorns. Now they could carry up to anywhere from 60 to 80 pounds of acorns in each one of these baskets. Imagine carrying you on their back for a whole day just to get the acorns back. And the thing is, they had to do more than one trip because ultimately they wanted to have at least a thousand acorns, a thousand pounds of acorns for every family that was in the village. That's a lot of acorns. This is what a granary would look like. And it was basically woven out of tule because remember that the um, hut one put everything or made everything out of tule. It was their go-to building material. When they would put this together, they did a couple of interesting things. They put a deer skin on the top of it. Now I want you to think, what animal would love to eat nuts as much as we do? I know, you've got it, squirrels, right? So between squirrels and rats and other insects, they had to find a way and insects, they had to find a way to um, protect all these acorns because that had to last them through the whole season. So this deer skin on top provided two purposes. One was to keep out the squirrels because the squirrels looked at it and thought it was some big animal and it kind of frightened them, but it also protected it from rain and fog because we have a lot of moisture in the air. They would have a little tiny hole at the bottom that they also plugged up, and that's where they would pull out the acorns to use. So just in case you don't remember what an acorn looks like, I brought in a couple for you. So these are acorns. These, um, these acorns come off of the oak trees, like I said, and these are inside a shell. So there's a nut inside of this shell. Now the hard part comes, because they brought all the acorns back, but now they needed to process them. So the very first thing they did was they would get a stone and they would take the acorn outside, hit it, well, maybe I can hit it, break it. <laughs> They'd have to break it open. And when they broke it open, inside was this. And this is the acorn nut, or the meat of the acorn. So once the acorns were broken, um, they would put it in this basket. And this is called a winnowing basket. And there would be both shells and the nuts in here. And they would put it, go up and down like this. And you can kind of see it flying all over. And the shells were lighter than the nuts. And so they would fly off and the nuts would be left that then they could put into their grinding stuff. A mortar and a pestle. So here we have the mortar and this is the pestle and they would put their acorns in here. Now this would be done on the ground and they would then start hitting it to crunch it up and turn it into a flower. Now this took a lot of work and this is a rock, a stone. So it was very heavy. Girls and women had very strong arms when they used all this. Now, I'm going to, the next step I'm going to kind of fake a little bit because they would have used leaves, but I'm gonna use just a bag. And in my bag here is a whole bunch of acorn flour. So this would be the next basket they would use. And this basket has holes in it. I hope you can kind of see it through the wall that there are holes and they would line it with leaves 
And then they would put their acorns that they had just crushed into here, and they would pour tons of water through this. This is like what you would drain spaghetti in, and your house it would be like a colander, and the water would just come dripping through. Now this was an important step because acorns are very, very bitter. Think of it like taking a lemon and just taking a bite out of it and you go like that. That's what acorns would be unless they washed it out. So once they had it all drained, they used another basket. This time the basket they're gonna use is a big basket that looks like this. And you're gonna see that there's kind of a dimple in the bottom. Our acorn meal now has turned into an acorn mush because there's water in it. This is the cooking basket. And to cook, you then had to do something pretty interesting because the basket is made out of tulies, right? Just like everything else and they cooked over fire. So how do you think they cooked this over a fire? We're gonna sort of pretend our fire's right over here um, and yet not burn up the basket. Because again, each woman made one of these baskets all by herself and this was her own personal basket that she would use. She doesn't want it get, getting burned up. So what she would do is take it and put it over in her, um, over by the fire, but she wouldn't put it in the fire because there was something in the fire that was heated up that she could then use to cook in here. So let me show you. These are just tools that they would make out of alder trees. And if I can do this, they would use it to pick up round rocks. And the round rock then would be put inside the basket and they would take that and do this with it. That's why there was that little dimple there, because the rock would roll around, roll around, roll around, and as it rolled around with the heat, it would cook the acorns. Um, if the uh, rock cooled off and they needed to cook more, they put it back and they would just change rocks, because there were a lot of different rocks they could do. Now, they have a basket full of cooked acorn mush. What do we do now for food? Well. Oh, remember your, your brothers and dads went out hunting? Let's put some deer in here. So we would cut up the deer using small knives like this. And you would also could put in some of those roots and bulbs or seeds that you had in here. And so it would end up being a very nutritious, delicious meal for you. The women in the village did their grinding normally in separate bowls, in grinding bowls. But we are very fortunate at Rutsch Ranch to have an example of a rock that is a huge grinding rock with multiple portals or holes in it that they would gather to um, actually grind their fish, their duck, dried duck, and their acorns. We know that this is at least 2,000 years old. We had scientists from UC Davis come and really study the rock. And it's pretty exciting to know that there were people that were here that long. So when you do come to Rush Ranch, it's really important that you take a walk out the South Pasture Trail and go see our grinding rock. Now, we've kind of talked about food and how you do all of these different kinds of food. And then I'm gonna go back to our cooking basket in a minute because it also is a serving basket. And one of the things that they did is that they used abalone shells, which is what they traded for. And this would be like a scoop, like a soup, a big soup scoop. And they would put it in and then serve it to people in their smaller baskets that they would then eat out of. Now, as a, as a Putnam child, you had to learn a lot of things. And one of the things that you had to do that had to do with eating was learn how to carve your own spoon. Is this the coolest thing ever? And you also learned how to make what would amount to a kitchen knife. 
This is not something that would be used for hunting. It would have just been used to cut up the meat that maybe that you had or the vegetables to put into your acorns. Now what's cool about both of these is, I don't know if I can show you, see the handles of these? Now look at the bottom of this antler. Do you see how it's the same thing? So all three of these show where you would have gotten your raw materials from. Other things that you had to learn how to do was to make these. Now they look pretty tiny. They're not chopsticks. They are sewing needles. And the bigger ones here have a little tiny hole at the top and they would have taken deer sinew and put it through there and actually used it like a needle and thread to sew skins together. The bigger ones would have been used probably for deer skin. These smaller ones have, it's a little different style and you can see that there's like these carved pieces, but they would take the sinew and wrap it around the carved piece and then probably use these for rabbit skins. When you were not busy making tools, gathering or hunting for food, there were other times of the day that you actually got to have a little bit of fun. And one of the things they did was play a game with shells that they put little numbers on, dots. And it would be sort of like a gambling game where they could just shake them like dice, roll them out, and if you got a certain number, you won the game. So this could have been one of the things that they did. The other thing that they did was make a toy that would be like this. It's a handle with a string and a whole bunch of round carved pieces of wood. And the idea was to get these. Uh, no, one more try. Ah, look at that, I got one. So there's, that would have been another fun game that you could have used. And the children actually had a lot of different games but almost always the games were meant to teach skills that then they would use later in life. One more area, and that's what happened in the evenings. You know, when you go home after school, you have a TV or video games that you can play, and of course they didn't have any of that thing. So what they did instead was they would go into an area where there would be a storyteller. And the storyteller could have been the chief of the tribe, it could have just been an elder. And as a kid, your job was to learn all of these stories and to memorize them. So what you would do is you, they, the adults gave you a couple of things that would kind of help out. One is um, just a rhythm stick. And You can see that it makes quite a bit of noise when it claps together. And they also would have plain sticks that would clap together. Those were all really um, a way of sort of helping you remember. But the most important thing that they had to help you remember was this. And this funny looking thing is called a story string. And just like you have stories at school, this was a way of helping you remember a, the story because of almost all stories have the same structure. So you have a beat at the top, once long ago, you have three characters. You have Raven, Coyote, and Otter, and they're best friends, but they always get into trouble. So they go off and get into some bad situation and that's the first event. And then they go off and have a second situation, which is not much better. And then you get to the most exciting part of the story where they're going, oh my gosh, are they going to get it together at all? <sighs> well, they do, they survive. And you finally get to the end of the story and the three of them end up being just great. But there's one last bead down here and it has a little feather attached. And this is the most important thing about all the stories and songs. And that was 
this was the moral or the lesson for the story. And the moral might be, be kind to your friends, treat your elders with respect, never use more than you need, always take care of the land because it takes care of you. So those are the moral stories or the lessons that you needed to learn. And there might have been over a hundred of these for you to learn and memorize. I hope you got an idea of what village life is about with cooking, with a few games, and evening entertainment and learning. Um, enjoy, and hopefully you can ask your teacher if you have any questions.